Great. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today we have a Heritage Cafe, a virtual Heritage Cafe, uncovering hidden stories with our local Tacoma uh, library, public library staff um, and the community archives. Uh, before we begin, before we begin, I'd like to remember that we are on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people. Since the beginning of time, the Puyallup people have lived on and have stewarded these lands and they continue to do so today. Uh, my name is Susan Johnson. I'm the Historic Preservation Coordinator with the City of Tacoma. I'm joined today by Paige Rooney, also with the City, uh, Mary Crabtree, Spencer Bowman, Dindria Barrow, and Anna Trammell. And I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and I will hand it right off to our lovely um, panelists. Thank you, Susan. We're really excited to be here today for this Heritage Cafe session. And today we're here to talk about the work that we are doing across archives and special collections at Tacoma Public Library to preserve and to surface stories that have been underrepresented or underinvestigated in Tacoma's local history collections and in the local history narrative in general. So Spencer, if you could move to the next slide. So here's a quick overview of what we're gonna be covering today. First, we're gonna start off by introducing ourselves and telling you a bit more about our roles at the library. Then we're gonna be giving you an overview of our two archives units, the Northwest Room and the Community Archive Center. We're then going to be sharing some of the work that we're doing across these two units to address gaps and silences in our holdings. Then we're going to be introducing our new database, Northwest Orca, where you can go to access some of the materials that we're going to be discussing today. And we're going to be showing you some examples of our work there. And then we are going to be wrapping up with some time for a Q&A. So I will get us started with introductions. My name is Anna Trammell, and I'm the manager of Archives and Special Collections at Tacoma Public Library, which includes the Northwest Room and the Community Archive Center. I'll turn things over to Spencer. Hello, my name is Spencer Bowman, and I'm a librarian in the Northwest Room. I perform reference services, process collections, manage our databases, and assist with programming. And I'll pass it to Dindria. Hello, I am Dindria. I am a library associate of the Community Archive Center. I love my job because I get to hear everyone's stories. Um, I love karaoke and hot cocoa, and my um, and I love doing that with my partner and my dog. <laughs> I'll pass it back to Anna for the next present. Uh, Thank the you. next slide, yeah. So we are going to now be telling you a bit more about the Northwest Room. So Spencer will get us started with giving you an overview of that unit. All right. Thanks, Anna. So in these next few slides, I'll go over what the Northwest Room is and what we do. So the Northwest Room is located in the downtown Main Branch Library, and it's dedicated to providing access to historical material that cover all aspects of life in the Pacific Northwest. The Northwest Room was created in the early 1970s as a section of the library that offered reference and in-person access to books, microform, recordings, newspaper clippings, moving images, photographs, maps, and books that documented all aspects of the development of the Pacific Northwest. But since then, uh, we've continued to evolve by adding digital, collection, digital resources, instructional programming, and much more. Currently, our collection contains tens of thousands of historical photographs from high profile commercial photo photography studios, city departments, newspaper photo or newspaper photographs to donated personal sn snapshots and slides. Uh, thousands of books, reports, clippings, files, directories, biographies, periodicals on a wide variety of historic subject matter, local historic subject matter, an impressive genealogical library that includes resources to assist you in family history research, and maps, city surveys, blueprints, plans, and vertical files that chronicle the history of homes and buildings in the Pierce County area, not to mention our online buildings index that provides address-specific historical building information. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dindria, who will talk about the Northwest Room 
Northwest Ranch Community Archives Center. Hello, the Community Archives Center at Tacoma Public Library. I'm gonna start with the purpose, mission, and goals. Next slide, please. We are funded by a federal grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS, awarded last year. So we're only about a year old. Our mission is to uncover the missing stories of Tacoma, collect them, and share them. The Community Archive Center acknowledges the significant representational gaps and silences existing in our local history collections. So we aim to partner with communities whose contributions to Tacoma have been underrepresented or under investigated and work with them to find ways to preserve and provide access to materials that help reveal their stories. These may include oral histories, written reflections, family photographs and organizational records. We share the oral histories and artifacts on an interactive library database we call Northwest ORCA and ORCA stands for Online Records and Collections Access very fancy acronym. By sharing your story with us, your voice will become a part of Tacoma's collective memory. Our goal is to make sure we are working to preserve these stories now so they are available for future generations. Next slide, please. So this is our call to action. Absent, hidden, silenced, missing. In Tacoma, whose stories are we missing? Who records history? Usually those in power, a specific author or news media. The Tacoma Community Archive Center wants to change that by collecting the missing stories of Tacoma, your stories told by you. We want to digitally archive your personal histories for future generations. If you want to help fill these gaps, please contact us. We want your stories, your photographs, your videos, your documents and your links so that we can share our collective history and bring Tacoma's archives into the 21st century. Thank you. Okay, you can move to the next slide, Spencer. So our work over the past two years across these two units <clears throat> that you've just learned more about has really been oriented around responding to these two guiding questions. Number one, how can we begin to address existing silences in our collections and move towards a more inclusive local history record? And number two, how can we eliminate existing barriers to access and empower our community to discover, use, and interpret our collections? So when we think about the development of local history collections and the use of local history collections through an equity lens, we really have to be thinking very critically about who is represented in our holdings and who is using these collections and how those two important aspects of our operations may be connected. But today I wanna to think about each of these questions in turn. So first let's think about the gaps existing in the local history record. So these gaps, or as we often refer to them professionally, archival silences, these can be both representational and topical. And we really have a responsibility and take that responsibility very seriously to be asking ourselves what communities, what groups, what topics are not present. Or in situations where maybe they are present, are those voices revealed through the perspective of those communities or are they shaped and filtered through an external perspective? And as Dendria mentioned when talking about the Community Archives Center, traditionally archives and history collections have in many ways upheld existing power structures. So they've often taken this top down approach in terms of power when it came to collection development, how the collection is built or digitization and preservation priorities. So as a result of this approach, archival collections are really filled with these representational and topical gaps. And particularly the stories of communities of color have been neglected. And this has really been 
intentional and active in many cases historically. And I think it's also been due to a real failure on the part of archives to really connect with these communities and to build the necessary trust and to develop policies and procedures that maybe fall outside of traditional practice, but that allow for the creation of anti-racist models around ownership and around description and around access. So let's think for a moment about the impact of these gaps that we've been discussing. Because I think that we trust the material that's in an archive, right? Because we're talking about the authentic documents and photographs. You know, these are the real uninterpreted materials. So it isn't a, a history book where maybe someone who has a certain perspective or certain biases has interpreted the story for us, it's the real content. It's the, the closest thing to actually being there and experiencing an event or a time for yourself. So I think that users want to trust the material that we have and they're, they're inclined to trust it. And while the sources themselves may be trustworthy, we have to be really upfront and transparent about the various levels of of gatekeeping and of bias that have actually shaped what's there. And that naming and that transparency around what's missing is really just as important as examining what's there. So local history collections at Tacoma Public Library are, are no exception here. There are major gaps in our existing holdings around communities of color, around low income communities, around particular geographic areas of the city, and also around topics like climate change and homelessness and gentrification. And these gaps have existed um, either because they're, they just aren't present in our collection, or in some cases they may be present, but they aren't accessible and discoverable. And I wanna move on to our next question because that accessibility and discoverability really gets to this because we really believe that our collections exist to be used. You know, we don't have these things and retain them permanently just so they can sit on a shelf. So it's not enough for us to build a collection that reflects Tacoma's diversity and complex history. We have to also ensure that these materials are accessible and discoverable and find really innovative strategies for connecting the community to our collections. So I think that we have to be aware that there can be a good deal of anxiety around libraries and, and around archives and maybe dealing with historical materials. And even if that anxiety isn't there, we've often you know, failed to show how our collections aren't just for you know, academics and professional historians. And of course, those figures are a very important and valued part of our user base, but we must be thinking beyond that group and making decisions around access that will allow us to meet the broadest user base that we can. And to do that, we have to find ways to illustrate how our collections are really living and dynamic and immediately relevant and how they can really be used for an endless range of purposes. So what are we doing at Tacoma Public Library to respond to these questions? If you could move on to the next slide, Spencer. Thank you. So digitization is the process of converting a physical item to digital form, and often this process can make the content of that item much more accessible because people can access it digitally without having to ask for it or even interact with library staff to obtain it. But we have 
millions of pages of material, so we can never fully digitize our collection. So instead, when we make decisions about digitization, we're prioritizing content that addresses some of these gaps that we've been discussing. Archival processing is how we go about organizing and describing a collection in order to ensure long term preservation and access. So here again, we have hundreds of collections that are currently under accessible or, or inaccessible in some cases. So we're prioritizing content here that again responds to our guiding questions. Collection development. So this is when we make decisions about what to add to our collections, what organizations we want to partner with to build our collection. And here we're regularly asking ourselves, how does this address our guiding questions? And we're also not just thinking about looking back and filling in gaps from the past. When we think about collection development, we're proactively thinking about how can we partner with the community to document what's happening now to ensure that the same gaps that we know exist now don't persist into the future. And we're rethinking traditional archival notions around description, how our collections are, are described so that people can find what they're looking for, around consent, around ownership, and really approaching each collection, particularly the newly acquired collections to work with donors and creators to develop solutions around these areas that are going to work for them. And finally, we are going beyond the library. We want to liberate our collections from beyond our four walls because we really can't expect people to come to us. We, we can't be gatekeepers to this content. So um, one example is we're working really closely right now with K through 12 students across Tacoma, across Pierce County, and we're taking our collections into the classroom and working with teachers so that their students can create content that can become a part of the Community Archive Center. We are engaging in outreach and participating in community events that allow us to, again, get out of the library and meet users where they are. And finally, much of our work, um, especially since we launched our new database in April, has been around Northwest Orca, which you're going to be hearing more about today. So this database is really designed around this need to make our collections more accessible and discoverable and be much more transparent about what our collections include. So we launched this database this year, and this provides access to materials that are available digitally alongside descriptions of our physical collections. So nearly everything that is described in this database is discoverable and available to users for the first time. So our hope is that this is really a big step towards empowering our users to access and interpret our collections. So now I am going to turn things over to Spencer, who's going to be demonstrating this database for you. Thanks, Anna. Uh, so as uh, you've heard, uh, Northwest ORCA is an acronym for Online Records and Collections Access, and it's our newest digital discovery database that houses many, many, many different kinds of material. So. Uh, in other words, it gives you, like Anna said, a window into the Northwestern's holdings. So uh, let's let's take a look at it. So I'm going to jump over let's see here. Oops. to our homepage. So I'm going to start at the uh, library's homepage just so you can get an idea of how to get uh, right to ORCA. So if you go to services up here at the top bar, you'll see local history, and you can click Northwestern, which will bring you to our website. And uh, right at the right at the top is 
our button for Orca and you click that and it'll send you right to Orca. So when you arrive at Orca, this is a like the home page and you'll always know you're at the home page because there's the banner, gives you a little bit of an explanation, um, some contact information. And then below that, we have a video guide that kind of gives you the basics on how to use it and how to navigate it. And then below that, there's a uh, guide, a PDF guide that kind of goes into a little bit more uh, in-depth uh, uh, tutorial on using the database. So uh, once you, when you first arrive, you'll see you always see this, and there's different ways to browse the collection, or you can do a keyword search. But right now, I want to kind of highlight each of these because they're important ways to limit uh, the kinds of things uh, you're looking for and uh, aid you in helping what you're looking for. So. Uh, the first one, collection, um, you can browse by collection. So I'm going to click that. And what that collection is, is just simply a group of items that have uh, that are related to each other. So um, so I've clicked that. And here I can see all the different collections uh, right up here. So we have uh, mayor's papers, uh, police department records, things like that. I want to show you one in particular. There's a planning and development service records. So if I click that, that'll take me to uh, the, that records page. And all, all the pages, all the records and uh, collection pages are gonna look very similar. You're gonna have this sort of diagram up here where you, you can see how things are organized. And it even gives you an example. So you have like a little box. So that's where all of these little folders are uh, contained and you can kind of like an exploded view you can expand these and see within this series what files are contained in that series so it's just a way to uh, organize these materials and then below the, the organization diagram you have the carousel and th this kind of gives you a quick peek into items that have been digitized so you can kind of quickly browse and see uh, what's in the collection what we have digitized and if something catches your eye, like this is a pretty striking picture, you can click that. And uh, this is that diagram up here. You can see, oh, this Luzon building image is located in this file, which is located in this series in this group of records. And then you have the digitized item here. And then below that is some information on it, uh, the title, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, title, uh, which box it's located in, and a little bit more information on this specific item. So collections are uh, just groups of items uh, that were created by uh, different different creators. So I'm going I'm, to, I'm here now, and I want to go back to the homepage. I could just click Northwest Orca up here, and that'll take me back. And here I am at the homepage. The next is creator. So creator is you're clicking this and you're browsing by, okay, who created the, the collection? And similar, you have a similar interface, the similar layout here. You've got um, all of the creators. We have mayors, fire department, Tacoma Public Library. Um, I'm going to go down. I kind of want to share this one. This is the Richards Photography Studio. Uh, and they were a premier photography studio from until about the 80s. And you can get some more information on them right here. So it talks about who the history of their company and uh, citations. And then above it, you have to the left, uh, the, you know, the um, how the this collection is organized. So it's there's th there's three different types of material. There's we have photographs, slides, and negatives. So if you were to click one of these, you can see uh, digitized items just like before in the carousel. Uh, click any one of these items, and you've got a description of what's going on in the picture. And you can also click any any of these pictures, and it'll bring it up in full resolution. And you can also you can right click and you know save it to your computer from here. But uh, yeah, these are pretty incredibly high resolution pictures that are um, always fun to look at. So I'm going to jump back again. So that's Creator. Go back to the home page. Digital object. So digital object is anything that has been digitized so or born digital. So uh, photograph, slide that's been scanned, or a PDF that was generated digitally 
born digital. So um, this is a fun way to kind of just explore and browse the collection because you can see here, uh, you can narrow your results over here by these limiters. You can say, oh, a city council meeting minutes, there's you know 3,132 3, digital objects in this collection. This kind of just stacks the top um, collections that have the most digital objects. And then um, down here is archival institution. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Um, but you can also come down here to media type and limit by uh, you know specific kind of uh, digital object. So you can see video, uh, we have a lot of videos um, and click on that. And any one of these, you can play it right in the, in the uh, browser or download it by uh, clicking download movie right here. Um, it's fun to explore that. Uh, but yeah, so there's all sorts of ways you can just browse by, by media type. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to the homepage again. And subject, so subject is, uh, it's subject headings that we've assigned to different kinds of material to kind of group them together across collections. So uh, let's take a look. So here we have our subject headings and over here is the sort of nest, nested view. So you, we have businesses, clubs and organizations, and this is going to be continuously expanding once we you know, add more things to ORCA and uh, it makes more sense to kind of start tying things together. But I wanted to show you just an example. So if we click business, that'll kind of break it down into these different kinds of businesses. And let's see, let's see what we have in food services. Oh, okay, so we've got quite a few pictures and I can see here on these records, okay, these are part of this, this collection. So um, you can click on any one of these and it'll expand it. And I wanted to share this, this one here. So this is, uh, I hope I didn't ruin your lunch, but uh, this is a 3D scan slide that were uh, pretty interesting. They were almost like um, uh, 3D glasses, but they were uh, taken by the Richard Studio back in the 50s for a very short amount of time. But they have uh, two different, uh, for each eye, they have two different slides. And uh, they were put together by an uh, uh, intern we had working on a special project. He was able to make GIFs out of them. So these are really fun to, uh, to check out. You can, um, uh, if you wanted to see more, you can click on the uh, you can click right, it'll take you right to the collection. There's a lot of different different kinds of material here. And when you open them up full screen, it takes a few seconds, but you can see these, these 3D slides. So those are always kind of a fun thing to browse. Um, so let's jump back to the next browse by is place. So place is very similar to uh, to subject where it's uh, just a specific place and it could be address or neighborhood. And um, this is also going to keep expanding and growing. And once we, have, we add more things and, and organize things, but I wanted to just kind of give you an idea by searching for uh, Hilltop neighborhood. So let's click Hilltop. And now below here is everything that has been tagged with Hilltop uh, neighborhood subject heading. So you can come down here and see there's like wide variety of things. So there's something from the planning and development services. There's some News Tribune photographs. Um, so this is just a neat thing to, if you're you know curious about uh, the Hilltop neighborhood or any of these other locations, you could kind of quickly narrow your, your searches down by using that browse by function. And um, last is repository. So this is just simply uh, where the uh, where the type of material is stored. So things that were, are related to the Community Archive Center will be located in the Community Archive Center repository. Northwestern's items are located in the Northwestern repository. And then uh, City of Tacoma files are going to be located in that repository. So um, I'm going to go back to the home page. And so now you kind of have an idea of how things are organized here. I wanted to uh, sh show you some of the content that we've made accessible and discoverable that helps counter some of the previous archival silences in our own holdings. So the first group of items are the issues of the Tacoma Indian News. And I can find these by, I can do a keyword search for Tacoma. 
comma Indian news. And these uh, newspapers were originally published by the Puyallup Tribe Office of Native American Programs, and the articles focus on local, regional, and national topics related to indigenous communities. And this is really great because we've even scanned some of these in their entirety. And just like before, you can kind of browse through here and you can see what, what issue you want, you're on. Click them and they'll open up uh, and full screen and you can read the articles and see the pictures here and download them and, and um, you know share them or uh, use them for research. But um, these are really fascinating and great to have um, easily accessible like this. So um, I'm gonna jump back to homepage again. And the other group of items I would like to show you are from the Tacoma News Tribune photograph files. So I'm just gonna type Tacoma News here. There it is. And these, this, so uh, we recently got the, uh, archive of the Tacoma News Tribune's photograph files, the photos they use for news articles and their paper from uh, roughly the 1950s. There's some earlier photographs, but the bulk of it's from the 1950s through about the 1990s. And uh, with this collection, we pri prioritize digi digitizing images related to uh, sort of lesser uh, represented subject matter. So uh, Vietnamese refugees, Asian Americans, Tacoma Community House, and Hispanic Americans, among many others. And you can see there's quite a bit of digitized content here already. So we have uh, 1,369 images. But one, the one in particular I wanted to show you is of the Puyallup tribe. So I can find that in a couple ways, but just to kind of give you an, an idea, I'm going to just open it up and find it in here. So you, it's just another way you can browse. So we have it organized by uh, subject alphabetically, and I'm going to go down to uh, the file. So there's quite a bit here. There's uh, many years of uh, content. And right down here, we have Indians Puyallup. And within here, you can see uh, the carousel, and we have 44 images. And you can always hit this show all too, and that'll just um, bring up all those those pictures for you immediately and it makes it a little easier to see kind of a gallery view and within here um, these are from some these are really great so uh, we can see we can click any image and scroll down to the scope and content and see exactly what's going on in this picture so we have a, a biologist uh, releasing some salmon in the hatchery uh, We have uh, we have a competition here and at a powwow. So uh, these are these are really incredible to see. There's even some other striking images from activism um, that were printed in the paper. So I encourage you to check these out. This is this is it. yeah. It's just never before seen stuff that was printed in the paper once, and um, likely this is the first time people are seeing these again. So this is pretty. Pretty incredible, important stuff. And um, yeah, I encourage you to, to go in and take a look. So now I will bring the slides back up and pass it to Dindria. Thank you so much, Spencer. Um, we are gonna go back to the Orca slides though. Okay. All right, because now I wanna share the the Community Archive Center repository. Oh, right. mm -hmm. So I would like to share some of the collections in Northwest Orca. Um, and uh, we're going straight to the repository for Community Archive Center. Um, and that way you can do that browsing um, through the repository as well, because there's a menu and a list on the left. Um, what I really love knowing too is that wherever I go as I'm perusing, um, I can go back to the A symbol, the CAC symbol actually, and then I can press it and it will bring me back. And then if I want to go back to the homepage of Northwest Orca, I just press that top left button. There you go. I love it. You're doing, you're doing great showing off there, Spencer. Okay. We are going to look at a community event collection. 
So as you go down to the list on the side here in blue, there's community event collection. And um, these are some of the events that we have been able to be a part of and collect materials from. And we're gonna go check out the Salashan Story Fest. And what I wanna show here again, is that you've got a menu up top um, and it may go by name. And then you also have name and face down in the carousel. Um, and the carousel only holds up to 20 images. So if you wanna see the rest, you have to do the show all. And then um, they try to keep them in order of the number and the name. Um, so we are going to go to uh, Vanna Singh. And I believe, yes, I believe that's Vanna Singh right there, but we could also click up the top. And um, in Vanna Singh's collection, uh, or her file, it's like a mini collection, I guess, is what the file is. You can see pictures from her childhood, um, growing up in Salashan, and, um, and then later on, there's a picture of um, different adults in her life, and then of herself being grown up. Um, there is also, beside the photographs, down below, you see the audio file. And so it's got the little play button and you can listen to her oral history right here in Orca, or you can download the audio by pressing the blue um, kind of button, yeah, down below. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to share with you were the community event collections. Um, we're gonna go back to the um, CAC repository sites, and um, we're gonna look at the oral history project. So that's Community Archive Center Oral History Project, about the fourth one down, yeah. It's gonna think about it. Okay, I love when the computer thinks about things and to remind you who's the boss, you know. Um, so I wanted to share with you a few people. Um, one is the first picture in the carousel and the first person on the uh, menu, Isidore Wallace, was my very first oral history interview. Very proud of that um, because it always takes a, a special person to break the ice. Um, then I, and I want to share with you also, if you click on Isidore, there is a scope and content that is gonna give you a little bit of a taste of what the oral history is about. And then down at the bottom, there is the access points. And the access points shows you um, a, the community that um, Isidore has been placed in or that has chosen to be placed in. And that, if you click that, what I think is really interesting is that you get a lot of other stories that have been connected to that community. And so um, when we came up with the terms for the community, we were very conscientious about what kinds of terms to use. Um, so if you come across any that concern you, please let us know, send us an email. All right, we're gonna go back um, just one step. And um, next we have Juanita Olivas. And you can see that there's the scoping content and um, there's a couple access points. So we have the black community and the unhoused community. Learned a lot from her oral history as well. Um, and then I'm gonna share with you Cynthia Tucker. And the reason why I wanna share that with you is because hers is a file kind of like Vanna Sings and she had a, a audio visual oral history. So that's the very first picture is gonna give you the whole video. Um, and so you can watch that here, or again, you can download the movie. Then there are other things in um, Cynthia Tucker's file. One is an autobiography that she wrote in college. And then she has pictures of her, um, her ancestors um, and then herself. Um, so her mom, her grandma, and then herself when she was younger. And then we are continuing the collection with works that she is doing now that have to do with the Colored Women's Club and the um, Nettie Asbury House. So wanna let you know that there are so many things that we can collect um, that go along with your personal story. Next, I wanna share with you, and I'm just gonna share two more things, okay? All right. Um, one more that I'm really, um, I'm really proud of is the Tacoma Community House Oral History Interviews. And that is second from the bottom. Um, we took three days to interview um, 
folks from various countries that were learning English. They were in their ELA course, and I think they were in ELA three and four. And um, so the first person um, that I would like to feature is Martin Villalobos. You were right there. There you go, right there. And um, and there's there's his audio and there's the access points and the, the scoping content is very brief because we put like a bigger scoping content at the beginning of the collection or the series. So just know that the scoping contents can be specific or they can be about the bigger group. Um, and then next is the next person underneath Martine right there, um, Laura Aresa Serna. And then just as easy as that, it comes up. Now, um, what's neat is that if you if you don't remember like who's in order of the pictures and who you were really wanting to look at, you can always go back to the top and then go to that carousel. All right. Thank you so much, Spencer. You're doing awesome. I love I love just making the directions and then like it magically happens. It's cool. Okay, the last thing I want to share with you, and uh, we'll go to the the CAC symbol again. Black Lives Matter mural project. We have um, this is um, we're going to have a lot more in here pretty soon. But right now we've got photographs. We've got two sets of oral histories. And then we have promotional material. We have um, just had a meeting with the person who was collecting all of the information and wants us to preserve this whole process of making the Black Lives Matter mural come to life. And so um, check back into this collection to see more um, documents, promotionals, um, interview survey information, all that good stuff. So that's what I wanted to share. We, we, wow, I really feel like we've done a lot in the past half year here. And, um, and especially just this idea that everything is accessible on this database is what is remarkable. You do not have to come in every time to get something. You can look onto this database. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Dindria, and thank you, Spencer, for handling all of our slides and all the back and forth. Um, so just to show you how dedicated we are to this work of documenting local stories, Dindria has to run to record an oral history. So we'll be uh, leaving a little before the end of the session. Um, but now we want to open things up for any Q&A uh, that anyone might have about the work that we're doing, anything that we've described today or anything related to Northwest Orca. Thank you so much. Uh, this was so informative and awesome. Thank you guys. Um, so if you're on Zoom, uh, you can use the Q&A function or if you're live streaming on Facebook, you can just comment on the Facebook live stream and we'll um, bring that question to them. So I guess in the meantime, while people are typing their questions, um, I have a quick question. Um, so what are some future goals you have that you would like to do or future projects like the oral history, like Satlashan Story Fest? Are there anything, uh, is there anything else that you would like to do um, for the future for Northwest Orca or for um, bridging those gaps in the archive? So Dindria mentioned that we launched the Community Archive Center as part of a, a grant project. So for that grant, we're in our final phase of the project right now, and that'll continue through the end of this coming summer. Um, so this phase is all about continuing to build the collection, but it's also about now that we've collected this material, how can we connect the community to it and get them to use it and interpret it. So we are going to continue hosting events just like Salishan Story Fest that Dindria mentioned. We're going to be having Hilltop Story Fest scheduled for May 6th at the Tacoma Community House. So we're really looking forward to that event. And we'll have other similar events coming up situated in different neighborhoods. Um, and we're also, like I mentioned in the beginning, we're doing a lot of work with K through 12 students right now. And that's across the Northwest Room and the Community Archive Center. And we're really trying 
trying to get the collections in into students hands into the curriculum and also encourage them to in addition to looking at some of the materials that we have in our collection starting to think about the gaps and silences that might exist and how they can partner with us to mitigate those awesome thank you uh, i don't see any questions yet in the chat or in the q a um there is a comment though this is really wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing this powerful body of work. I look forward to watching it grow. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone in the audience? If not, I'm not seeing any. Um, do you all have contact information or anything you'd like to share uh, so people can contact you with any questions they have? Yes, I will put our Northwest Room email and our Community Archives Center email into the chat. And you can also visit us at tacomalibrary.org slash northwestroom or tacomalibrary.org slash community archives. There's a contact us form there and someone will get back to you. Awesome. Uh, let me check the Q&A. Not any questions, but more comments um, that fascinated with this. I know what I'll be doing today and this is fantastic. So awesome. Yes, and we encourage you to take a look today, but keep checking back. Um, we just published our 200th collection. And again, most of this is content that's never really been accessible and discoverable before. So we now have um, 200 collections that are described here. And I think we've already moved past that. So every week, either a new collection, a new description, new digitized content is being added. I also want to pop in and say we also have a blog too you can subscribe to on our website where we'll highlight new collections and kind of give a little bit of background and then link to them so that's uh, uh, out there and um, we're always kind of having new things pop up every other week or and every day so awesome and I do see one question on Facebook um, they are asking do you have information and or photos of the Fern Hill district so we have an event coming up. I don't have the date right in front of me, but if you visit us on TacomaLibrary.org slash community archives, we have all of our upcoming events listed. And we are going to be having an event in the Fern Hill branch of the library where we're encouraging people to attend. They'll be able to bring their family photos and documents for us to digitize and make accessible on Northwest Orca. We'll be recording um, short oral histories with attendees. And we'll also have a selection, a small pop-up exhibit at that event with some of the items, documents, photographs related to the Fern Hill neighborhood will be on display there. Um, but you can definitely follow up with us by email. We'd be happy to point you in the direction of content related to Fern Hill. Awesome. Um, I see no more comments on Facebook. Um, if anyone else has any on Zoom, still have a couple minutes here. But if not, thank you guys so much. This was really informative and great and awesome. Um, this is just great work that you all are doing. Um, so um, on behalf of the city, thank you all so much for doing this presentation um, and talking about Northwest Orca and the archival gaps in Tacoma Library. This was great. Um, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to, to do this. Great, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone.